Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. This is my lab activity video and in this video I am going to discuss the determination of dissolved oxygen by modified Rinkler's method. So let's start with the video. So here what is dissolved oxygen? So dissolved oxygen is the amount of oxygen which is present or dissolved in water. It is a direct indicator of the support of aquatic life by the aquatic resource. Therefore, it is an important parameter of the water quality. Now the question comes how it is going to be measured and the units. So dissolved oxygen is usually reported in milligrams per liter or as percentage air saturation. And the dissolved oxygen for healthy water is reported in between 6.5 to 8 milligrams. Or it can also be defined as a dissolved oxygen saturation level is between 80 to 120 percent for healthy water. Now the question comes from where this dissolved oxygen come into this aquatic body. So this dissolved oxygen enters into the aquatic body mainly by two natural processes. One is diffusion from the atmosphere and the second one is photosynthesis by the aquatic plants. Now the important question comes again, does the dissolved oxygen level is everywhere same or it is different and if it is different, what are the factors which affect the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water? So let me tell you, dissolved oxygen level varies from point to point. So the important factors which affect the amount of dissolved oxygen into the water are Running water has more level of dissolved oxygen as compared to the stagnant water. Cold water has more oxygen level as compared to the dissolved oxygen present in the hot water. Or we can say if we increase the temperature, dissolved oxygen level decreases. As salinity increases, dissolved oxygen decreases. The last one is dissolved oxygen level decreases as we move deeper into the aquatic body. Now the next important point, how we are going to measure this dissolved oxygen. This dissolved oxygen can be measured by various methods. One is calorimetric method and here we are having two different reagents. Ego, ceramine with which this dissolved oxygen forms blue complex and the other one is rhodazine D with which it forms a bright pink complex. The other methods are electrochemical sensor method, polarographic method and optical sensor method. Apart from this, Rinkler titration method as well as modified Rinkler me titration method is also there. So we, here in this video, we are going to determine this dissolved oxygen by modified Rinkler's method. So what is this Rinkler's method? So Rinkler's method is first proposed by the Rinklers in 1888 and it was later on modified by Strickland and Persons in 1960. So according to this method, it is based on iodometric method which is an indirect titration method. About this iodometric titration method, I have discussed in detail. I will give you the link of that in the description box so you go and check that. So this titration method basically depends on the oxidizing property of the dissolved oxygen. This dissolved oxygen which is present into the water sample oxidizes iodide ion to, to iodine quantitatively. So this is the Rinkler's method. Now coming to the differences between Rinkler's and modified Rinkler's method. So in the Rinkler's method we are using these two reagents and in the modified method we sodium azide is used additionally. So why this sodium azide is used? This sodium azide is used because it suppresses the interference by the nitrite ions present in the water sample. Why this Separation of nitrite ions is required. So this separation of nitrite ions is required because these nitrite ions may react with the iodide ions to produce iodine which gives interference and, and it is a positive interference by the nitrite ion. So we get different results other than the actual results for the dissolved oxygen because of these nitrite ions. So to suppress this interference, we are going to add sodium azide, right? 
now the chemicals used are mentioned over here the solution preparation so these solutions i have prepared according to this reference and the starch solution for this i have made a video already i will give into the description box sodium thiosulfate again two videos on this so i will add all these videos in the right so here this four molar eight molar quantity is given in this right and three molar. and to prepare these solutions i am using this formula so weight is equal to molarity into molecular weight into volume so whatever volume you require you just put it here put the molecular weight and whatever will be the molarity which you require put over here so you will come to know how much weight of the reagent or sample is going to be added in this much volume so this is the uh, way how you can prepare your samples now the procedure so rather reading this procedure i will just going to perform the experiment so first take clean and dried reagent water and dip it inside the level of water also stopper this reagent water inside the water container and do not allow to trap the air in the reagent water so this is the correct way to fill this reagent water right now we are adding the label to this reagent bottle the capacity of this reagent bottle is 125 ml now in a petri dish i have kept the tissue to paper and to on which i have kept my dissolved water sample reagent water to this i am going to add 3 molar of manganese sulfate and here is the reaction of this the important point is that dip the tip of this pipette inside the water and immediately close it after adding this manganese sulfate i am just shaking it so that it will mix in a well manner and the excess of water from this reagent bottle was come outside now we are adding the alkali solution which is having sodium azide as well as potassium iodide into it so this is again added after dipping this tip of the pipette inside the reagent bottle here you can see at the bottom of this reagent bottle brown precipitate of manganic hydroxide starts precipitating immediately now i again mix it thoroughly and we leave this reagent bottle for some time and here you see the precipitate and after some time that will get settled down at the bottom of this reagent bottle here you can see after some time so uh, once it is settled we are going to add 1 ml of concentrated h2so4 to this reagent bottle so as soon as i am adding this h2so4 to this reagent bottle it will starts dissolving and you see the color which is changing to brown and this color is just because of formation of iodine so here all the precipitate dissolves you just see this and now it is ready for the titration so i will take 100 ml of this
here is the 100 ml of this water sample and do this titration immediately and this is the molarity of sodium thiosulfate now we are going to titrate so i have taken this 100 ml of water sample in the conical flask now i will start titration once the brown color of this solution get it painted i will going to add start solution to this so on the few drops i have added and i see the color is discharged to some extent now i am going to add start solution which forms purple color of or we can say purple complex of starch iodine but you can say it is not seems to be purple you are very true because this is just because of the brown color once this color will get painted we will see the purple color now again starting the titration and here the color get painted and here you can see the purple color of starch iodine complex and now we are having the completion of titration now we will check the final reading so the final reading the reading of burette is 1 now coming to the observation table so here what we have taken 100 ml of the water sample we have taken initial reading of the burette 0.8 and the final reading of the burette 8 the difference is 1.0 it means 1 ml of the sodium thiosulfate is consumed against 100 ml of the dissolved oxygen so guys here please note if you are going to perform some important solution so it is my suggestion please make your sodium thiosulfate solution dilute so that you will have a reading about 20 ml because according to this 100 m against 100 ml it is consumed just 1 ml so it is too concentrated as compared to this water sample and even one single drop can change the result so this is an incorrect exercise but since i am just going to do this for the demonstration purpose so i didn't dilute but this is my suggestion please pay your attention if you are you have to dilute your sodium thiosulfate means n by 10 is not a good number right now coming to the reactions involved so here the reactions involved manganese sulfate which we have added in koh in the presence of oxygen which is present in the water sample it forms manganic hydroxide which gives brown precipitate so here what you have seen the change in oxidation state is plus 2 to plus 4 right so this change in the oxidation state of this manganese plus 2 to plus 4 this is called fixation of oxygen and at low temperature it occurs slowly now this reaction under low ph conditions or acidic conditions happens like this so i am going to explain this manganic hydroxide which is present over here to this solution we are going to add h2so4 so this manganic hydroxide again forms manganese sulfate and it oxidizes this iodide ion to iodine and it itself get reduced so if you are having problem in understanding the reducing and oxidizing it so you can check this video of oxidation and reduction right now what you have seen so 0.5 oxygen produces one mole of manganic hydroxide and this one mole of manganic hydroxide produces one mole of iodine if suppose i multiply it by Two, so I will get one oxygen. So one oxygen on the rea reaction with manganese sulfate produces two manganic hydroxide, and two manganic hydroxide produces two iodine. This equation can also be understood over here. This manganic hydroxide in low pH condition or on addition of acid 
to the solution it produces nascent oxygen and this nascent oxygen on reaction with potassium iodide it produces iodine and this can be accommodated in one equation in this which i discussed in previous slide right so please do not get confused and do not scare about all these this iodine reacts with the excess of iodide present in the so here is the answer why we have used excess of potassium iodide this iodine is less soluble in water so just to make it soluble or just to have this iodine into the solution so we need to prepare this i3 minus ion which produces by the reaction of iodine to iodide now reaction with sodium thiosulfate so here is the ionic reaction this i3 minus on reaction with this sodium thiosulfate it produces 3 i so here this will get oxidized and this will get re in the molecular form this reaction can be understood like this so here is the sodium thiosulfate on reaction with iodine it produces iodide ion sodium iodide and it will get oxidized right so here only thing which you need to be remember only these three equations now as i told you earlier in my previous slide that one mole of oxygen produces two moles of iodine and here one mole of iodine requires two moles of sodium thiosulfate so one mole of oxygen requires four mole of sodium thiosulfate you could remember that right so this is important point which we come to know from these reactions that is why these reactions are important now this relation we are going to use here in the calculation part so this one mole of oxygen reacts with four mole of sodium thiosulfate and here is the molarity equation for redox titration here one stands for water sample and two stands for sodium thiosulfate now putting all the values here so one here a1 is four please do not get confused this oxy, this is for oxygen and uh, one mole of oxygen reacts with four mole of sodium thiosulfate in my in one of my video i told you if you have some type of confusion so divide this equation by one one mole and this equation by four mole so you will ultimately get four into m1 it is equal to one into m by two. so if you are going to perform some important sample so please dilute this solution right? so m1 is equal to this much if we solve it get this much strength as we know molarity into molecular weight and uh, on cancelling these units we will get gram per liter of dissolved oxygen which is equal to molarity this much into molecular weight of oxygen so here guys you can may make a mistake so since dissolved oxygen is the molecular oxygen we have to consider and in this manner what we get we get this much of gram per liter or 8 milligram so this is the calculated value of dissolved oxygen but friends here you need to consider the correction factor what is that correction factor and why it is considered why it is need to be considered so because in water sample some oxidizing or reducing agents may present and they may interfere in the idometric manner so if oxidizing agents present they liberate iodine from iodides they will give more readings means positive interval reducing agents were there they reduces iodine they will give the less reading so that is called negative interval in addition to that organic matter present in the solution can be oxidized partially in the presence of oxidized manganese precipitate and that cause negative errors so some type of modifications are required in addition to that uh, manganese sulfate which we have added to the solution that also have some dissolved oxygen that has to be considered in one of the reference uh, i found 0 0.0017 milliliter per liter since i have done this in milligrams per liter so i have not that over here so i hope guys you find this experiment or lab activity important and uh, it is uh, helpful for you so if you find this please like share and subscribe thank you all thanks for watching